Lane. I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics. Do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. W-O-C-A. We have Lena on the phone. Hi, this is Lena with ABC Frederick's Appliance. We service all makes and models and warranty our work and our used appliances. From Maytag to Whirlpool, Crosley and Speed Queen. So stop in at ABC Frederick's Appliance to see our showroom one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue. Or call 347-2781. That's 347-2781. That's one-eighth of a mile from the tracks on County Road 25 in Bellevue. ABC Frederick's Appliance. Great talking to you again, Lena. See you at ABC Frederick's Appliance. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Orders placed online, they were up to four times more likely to include extra toppings, which translated to nearly 10% more calories per pizza compared to all the other orders. The hottest surgical fix that's come as a result of our camera-ready technology is the chin implant. One of the oldest stereotypes about men is no longer true, because today, men tend to be the first to say, I love you, in relationship. On the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Robin, we need a trophy for the winner of the best rock band. Oh, who won? Stone Quarry. Ooh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, maybe. I- I'm thinking we should call BJ Trophies. Wait, let's get Dan to make a trophy. But... Oh, Dan. Robin, didn't we go through this already? Yes, Robin. Dan, we need you to chisel a rock. Is this for another trophy? Yes, it is. Um, remember, I'm not so good at chiseling trophies. Why don't you call BJ Trophy? That's what I tried to say. But you'd be perfect. Why? I thought we already decided the best trophies are from BJ Trophies. Because you're good at rocks. Yes, Dan, because you're good at rocks. But you want a trophy, not a rock. Uh, it's for a rock band. Oh, 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 jeez. Isn't that a clever idea? Clever, yes. Classy, no. I think you'd better stick to BJ Trophies for your rock band trophy. But you're so good at rocks. For the classiest trophies anywhere, call BJ Trophies 732-2249 or go to BJTrophy.com Unless you want to rock. Yeah, then call Dan. Unless you need a classy rock. Then stick with BJ Trophies. This is JJ Lissau from the WSCA Studios with this news update brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. According to Ocala.com Health Management Associates, one of the two companies competing for the lease to operate Monroe Regional Medical Center in Ocala will be subject of a 60 minutes piece Sunday. CBS's website offers a brief description. Steve Cross investigates allegations from doctors that the hospital chain they work for pressured them to admit patients regardless of their medical needs. This news update was brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. If you would like to schedule a special event at one of Ocala's premier facilities, call 352-237-6644 today. Welcome back to the show. Trinator Friday, football Friday. Not at uh, Gateway Bank today. They're doing having a function over there. They booted us out of the street. And uh, <laughs> I went by there, by the way, to drop off some stuff and happened to pick up a cookie while I was there. So Of course. I had to have one you of those. You know, I didn't even get a cookie. Come yeah. on. Yeah, well, it's usually you, you got your share of them, so I don't think you missed out on too much. Uh, you know, uh, when I lived in New York and used to go to every work every day on the train, the mm-hmm. Grand Central Station. <clears throat> it was my, you know, when I first moved there, I had to walk through Grand Central Station and often had to step over homeless people. Right. When you live in New York, it's a sight that you, 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 you see a lot. And I, it bothered me. But I thought, well, this is just the way people do it in New York. You know, this is it. This is what it's about. And, uh, you know, what can I do about it? Nothing. And then... Uh, it always bothered me that I did nothing about it and still haven't, which is one of the reasons I like things like Helping Hands because they do, in fact, help people get homes. But I've always just felt guilty about that. This has been 25 years ago, and I'd walk through Grand Central, step over people all over the place, and it was very sad, but yet you had to steel yourself against it, you know, so you didn't get caught up in it. And I thought, well, this is the way it is. Then one day I walked to work, walked by a deli, and I saw a young businessman on his knees and his suit with a sandwich from the deli breaking it off and putting it in the mouth of a homeless person. I thought, wow. I mean, there's somebody that could do something and did something. You know, I always saw this, you know, it's always a feeble excuse when you say, what can I do? 
That's why I was particularly touched by the story I read today and I, I, the video I watched a little bit of. In New York... Police officer. Yes. In, the, in New York, um, a cop in Grand Central... It's a great story. ...walked by a homeless person, uh, and he happened to be catch the eye of a woman who was there from Arizona who did a little video. She spotted this cop with a shoeless man. The shoeless man had been asking for a change. And she videoed this, and the officer, in which the officer said, I have these size 12 boots for you. They're all weather. Let's put them on and take care of you. And the officer squatted down on the ground and proceeded to put socks on the boots of the man. Now, the officer didn't know anything about the video, had no idea that this is going on. So what happens, a woman is Jennifer Foster of Florence, Arizona, the visiting Times Square, and she has uh, uh, a connection to law enforcement. She is the manager of the Pinal County Sheriff's Public Safety Communications Center in Arizona, and she said, I've been in law enforcement for 17 years. I was never so impressed in my life. I didn't get the officer's name. Well, it went viral. Yes, and, it did. And, and all of a sudden, he became world famous. People love this story. It's a great which, story. Which in itself tells me about the innate goodness of people. Well, you know. Is that they care about them. One more note. And, and you know, and, and the fact that this guy's name is, in fact, DePrimo, Officer DePrimo. His name is Lawrence DePrimo, 25 years old, J.J., from Long Island. Only been on the job three years. He lives with his parents. He's shocked by the attention he gets and didn't know the photo that was taken. And he told the New York Times, he said he didn't know. He said, I was free. it was freezing out, and you could see the blisters on the man's feet. I had two pairs of socks, and I was still cold. Right. So this is something, an act of kindness. We always talk about paying it forward and he an did. act of kindness. This kind of thing has touched a lot of people. And, you know, here's the thing that, that I took from the story, buddy. Not only did he do that, not only did he recognize the need, but this cop, not only did he help with the need, but it wasn't a shabby pair of boots he went and bought either. It was right. over $100 for this pair of boots he bought yep. to give this homeless man who he didn't know, didn't have anything, didn't have any connection with him. And it just so happens the lady took a picture of it. Now, yep. So whenever you're thinking, well, I should feel bad for these people. Sorry, I can't do anything. There's another example of somebody who did do something. Just one man, one person, but, you know, that's that random act of kindness that lives forever, and now millions of people know about it. Let's go to the phones. Who you got, J.J.? Jim. Jim, hey, what's up? Hey, How are buddy. You? I'm good. And good. JJ and everybody. How's everybody today? Good, Jim. How are good, you doing? Good, good. I'm hanging in there. Listen, that, uh, I'm not a, really a Christian person, but when I read that story this morning, and then just now listening to you talk, buddy, it made me think of that one passage that says something to the effect of what you do unto the least of these you mm-hmm. do unto me exactly you know I mean exactly. if more people had that kind of attitude this world would be a whole lot better place because not everybody that's out there on them streets is there on, on their own choice correct I mean people don't realize that there are a lot of people out there that just they don't have anything they lost everything through no fault of their own or whatever and that's all they can do and, and all I'm- they need is that hand up have a good day, y'all. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Uh, and again, the, the people last night, there were five women there. All of them had these tales of woe. They weren't up there to tell their tales of woe. They had been, quote unquote, rescued by, by, by Helping Hands and Brad Dingus' organization. They were there to talk about get, how, how they'd gotten their lives together. And one woman in her 20s was the last one. She was pretty young, 20, JJ's age, maybe a year older, who had several children. Um, and uh, she had a terrible experience. Her husband beat her. Then one day, her, I think her father committed suicide or something, and then her mother got pushed down the stairs and killed. I mean, this all happened to this 23-year-old woman. What? Yeah. And she, uh, I think, I hope I'm not mixing my stories up, but all this terrible stuff happened to this woman. And she began talking about it. When she got the part about her mother, she lost it completely. Understandably. Right. And you know. So everybody lost it. Well, yeah, pretty much. People, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know. You ever heard of Chainsaw Al Dunlap? No. Google it sometimes. All right. He is a got is a book. the artist guy that cut. No, screen? no, no. He's a world famous millionaire. Chainsaw Al Dunlap. Al Dunlap wrote a book. He lives in Ocala. He wrote, spent, gave FSU about five million dollars for facilities. He's the guy that got became famous for basically going in and, and taking over corporate raider and taking over companies. 
you know, and uh, and Scott uh, Paper. Uh, well, he's associated with a lot of companies. Yeah. He's, he's actually took over. And some people don't like him because they say he basically took the companies and drove them in the ground or whatever. But he's got a benevolent heart. He said, I'm just a kid from Hoboken who had nothing. And he's made a big thing. He talked about this last night. And one of the things that Brad Dinkins said was, you know, Mr. Dunlap told me one thing. In the survey of 80 CEOs about their success, but who was the person who was most responsible for their success. And who do you think they said? Uh, Al. Who Albert th- J. Dunlap. No. Who do you think they said that they knew? Who Who do you think that they knew that was responsible uh, for their success? Their father. That's a good guess. Tom? Uh, their mother. Their mother. They were, All of them said their mother was the most influential person in their life. In terms of their success. Anyway, that was related to the woman's story regarding uh, her mother getting pushed down the stairs and and and, uh, and 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 murdered, basically. Anyway, so I just want to say during this holiday time, I don't want to beat up on people and make them feel guilty or bad or whatever, because you all we all can do a little something to help out. But uh, this community does have a heart, and uh, and and we have done many things in this, in this city that I'm very proud of. Not me, but people in the city. Uh, and as long as we can have that sensitivity and that awareness that there is this need, no, we can't save everybody. You know, I understand that, but we can we can do something. And I think when you do something, this is what this officer did. He did something that will be remembered and will be commemorated, and he'll be a hero forever for a small act of kindness. Well, the thing going back to the police officer, which you originally started the story. I like his his comment. I, I saw a uh, article. He was quoted as saying, "My job is to protect and serve." He needed protection, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what was needed there. His feet needed protection from the weather, and the officer said his job was to protect and serve. He was just doing his job. Yeah. Anyway, nice story there. Uh, coming up in the sports hour later on, we'll talk about the, all the big games. Uh, we'll talk about Florida's number one recruiting class, the Gators. Big win over Marquette last night. We have uh, Joe Williams from Mile High Sports who will be picking games with us. We'll be doing our picks. Mark Long from the Associated Press. Derek Tyson from uh, ESPN Gator Nation on the recruiting. Florida has the number one recruiting class. Bad news for Miami, J.J., again. <laughs> um, and, we'll overcome. And then Willa Boria, we hope, will be here if he got the word that we weren't at the bank. So uh, hopefully we'll be get, get to Willa. And uh, Bobby James is a guy who has an interesting background. He's an educator. He's been um, a key guy in this community for a long time. Um, he was formerly uh, uh, on a coalition for Central Florida Schools, uh, the Central Florida School Boards, and he was uh, appointed that position. Uh, and there were 10 school districts and 850,000 students, about one-third of the state's public school children. And uh, in 2007, Jim Yancey basically had him petitioned and just getting him him to be accepted to the coalition and so he uh he has served the community i believe bobby now is stepping down or has stepped down from that position but uh, remember the day we had a guy on talking about horses uh, yeah. at harry's mr james the, the man that uh and what's bobby james's last name james yeah his brother oh his brother yeah. I didn't so uh, yeah so yeah because uh he uh trained uh was one of the uh trainers for um affirmed you got it Ding 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 ding. I'd met him on the square at the, I'd met him on the square at the Kentucky Derby uh, party, and then we yep. had him on the radio later. All right. Well, Bobby James is here in the house. We'll take a break. Come back, and Bobby will give us his uh, his story about the Qantas uh, pancake uh, breakfast and why he wants to dedicate it to uh, Jim Kirk. Time out. We'll turn to the program after this uh, little break on 1370 AM, 96.7 FM, streaming live at WOCA.com. The source. Requires bank approval and vehicle purchase at listed price. See dealer for details. Experts predict this December is going to be crazy busy for car sales. We need to stock up now to prepare for the rush. Hello, I'm Chris Spears from Prestige Auto Sales. I'm about to tell you about one of the biggest saving secrets of the season. Cha-ching! The early bird gets the deal this month if you'll trade in your old car early. Even if you owe $2,000, $4,000, or $6,000 more than it's worth, you'll get up to $4,011 off based on the car you choose. Our For the People credit approval process works hard to get you approved. That means even if you've been turned down before, 
You could be approved for a nicer, newer car today. Be an early bird and save up to $4,011. Shop early before the holiday rush and get a nicer, newer car earlier than you imagined and trade in your old car early. Hurry, this special ends after we've helped 87 people. I'm Chris Spears and I'm a dealer for the people at Prestige Auto Sales in Ocala or Bellevue. Or call 694-1234. See you at Prestige! It's Saturday morning football season. Time to kick it off with some great food and one of your favorite beverages. But where to go? Well, try Brunch on Broadway. Check out Football Saturdays at Pie on Broadway every week at 10 a.m. for the perfect blend of football, food, and fun. At Pie on Broadway in downtown Ocala, we'll get you ready for all the big games the live broadcasts of Buddy Martin's Saturday sports page on WOCA AM and FM. Saturdays are also good days to stroll around beautiful downtown Ocala. Head to the farm market on the square and then enjoy brunch on Broadway just in time to watch ESPN's game day on one of our TVs. Of course, Pie is also a great place to dine for lunch and dinner the rest of the week, too. But Football Saturday at Pie on Broadway is special. Pie on Broadway, where you get to the college spirit with brunch on Broadway as your pre-kickoff menu. Hello, I'm Mark Sears with Regency Printing. With over 10 years in the printing business, I know you'll find Regency Printing the place for all your local printing needs. Plus, I have back services, mailbox rentals, notary service, U.S. mail, pack and ship, all at one convenient location, 2375 Northeast 25th Avenue. Just look for the yellow signs. Regency Printing, 789-6683. That's 789-6683. Regency Printing. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source, 1370 a.m. and the new 96.7 FM. It's Saturday morning football season. Time to kick it off with some great food and one of your favorite beverages. But where to go? Well, try Brunch on Broadway. Check out Football Saturdays at Pie on Broadway every week at 10 a.m. for the perfect blend of football, food, and fun. At Pie on Broadway in downtown Ocala, we'll get you ready for all the big games and the live broadcasts of Buddy Martin's Saturday sports page on WOCA AM and FM. Saturdays are also good days to stroll around beautiful downtown Ocala. Head to the farm market on the square and then enjoy brunch on Broadway just in time to watch ESPN's game day on one of our TVs. Of course, Pie is also a great place to dine for lunch and dinner the rest of the week, too. But Football Saturday at Pie on Broadway is special. Pie on Broadway, where you get to the college spirit with brunch on Broadway as your pre-kickoff menu. to go to town and when I do I stop at Dairy Queen to get some fresh cooked piping hot food from their real char grill just like a cookout well this month they've got their 100% beef quarter pound cheeseburger meal with crispy fries and a drink for only $4.99 and for dessert real fresh made ice cream you can lick their cones but you can't beat their shakes Dairy Queen Silver Springs where they always treat you like kings and queens I right, were talking about people who do things to the community and, um, and you know, and, and all the things that uh, people have accomplished and all the fine organizations that we have and people who have a, a servant's heart and uh, just get things done. Uh, my next guest is a guy who's been getting it done around this community for quite some time. He's very active in the Qantas Club. He's been very active in education. Uh, he's the vice chairman of the Marion County School Board. He's uh, well known in this community for his work in Kiwanis Boys and Girls Club. And uh, proud to have Bobby on. I've been trying now for about a year to get him on. And finally, I get to get him on and uh, for a good cause. Hi, Bobby. How you doing? Oh, wonderful. It's always good to uh, see you good, buddy. It's one of these days where you have some good news and you want to just share it with the world. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So I know that one of the well, – let's get to the good news right off the bat. What, what you got? Well, we uh, at the Kiwanis Club, 
is to have our annual pancake breakfast. And it's been that we've been doing it for about 55 years. And this year we added another little special quirk to it, a little special meaning to it. We want to honor a country Jim Kirk. And when we say that, we want to honor a person that it, that was president of the club in 1959. And he's done so much for the community, and especially for young kids. And we want to we want to make sure every kid, uh, every person, have an opportunity to to a, at least uh, brush into Country Jim Kirk. And why did I call him Country Jim Kirk when when I first came back here as a basketball coach and and we needed some air time trying to promote our basketball program? He was the guy that stepped up. He's always stepped up for the community and. This year, we would just want to honor God that mean a lot to us. And if I could just uh, throw it back to you, buddy, I know he's done so much oh, yeah. for this city. Oh, yeah. Uh, of Ocala and Central Florida Community College. And he's one of these guys that, that everybody at some point would like to emulate or be like. And I just think the Kiwanis Club, and just so happened this year, I'm the Kiwanis uh, chair sponsor of the Pancake Breakfast, guys. Pancakes. Oh, you can eat pancakes for $5. Oh, it's, it, it's well known. I'm, I'm there every year, and a lot of folks are. We'll talk about that in a minute and get the details on it because a lot of people want to come for sure. But back to Jim, he's like a national treasure. He's a national treasure, and he's one of these guys that every community at some point need to take their hats off and say, job well done. And we at the Kiwanis Club want to start a tradition of re- recognizing Kiwanians that have made it a different for many years in this community. And I, I think about his sons. Who I had the opportunity to coach those kids in high school. And I, I just know that it's one of these things where you just want to take a, a few minutes and say, job well done. I would like to encourage the people that have touched, uh, that have been touched by Country Jim uh, to send a kid to camp in honor of Country Jim Kirk. And I, I, just, I used to love this phrase when it said, uh, Hey, tell them Country Jim sent you. Yeah. I would love for kids to, that would walk into the camp and say, Country Jim sent you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was one of those things where you get to see some uh, some neat people will have a chance to go back and say, Hey, Country Jim, this is for you. That's a great idea. And I, I know Jim a little bit, and I had the honor of about five or six years ago writing a magazine story, a lengthy magazine story on Jim because I've known him a long time. And for those people who didn't know the early country Jim Kirk, he came to town and started WMLP from scratch. He walked the streets, he told me the story, he walked the streets downtown the square to get the mindset of what people wanted in this community in the 50s. And he found out people wanted country music, they wanted gospel music, they wanted local news, you know, and local personalities. So he started off with WMOP, and they had they they had country music. They were the longest standing AM country music station in the country, should be in the state, until 1996, when a group of people bought it and flipped it over to Sports Talk, which I was one of the ones involved in that. But it was time to go to the next thing. But Jim, right along, stayed with it, and he he always encouraged us. And I'll tell you a quick story about Jim, and we'll get back to pancakes. Jim's a great guy. He has a lot to overcome. He's a Florida State fan. <laughs> now he would love that joke, of course. <clears throat> and uh, he uh, oh, he carried the he carried the color, garden and gold colors back when they weren't very good and well known. And he supported the Seminoles <clears throat> when he was about one of about three people in town that supported the Seminoles. He never gave up. He actually started the Seminole Radio Broadcast Network for a couple of years there back in that day. But Jim uh, Jim, of course, as you know, played the ukulele. Uh, he would play and sing on his morning show. He'd sing songs. And everybody knew, you know, who J- Country Jim was, and he would sing a song every now and break out a song. So when we started the morning show at MOP, Buddy Martin in the morning, <clears throat> he came in one day and said, I wrote you a song for your show. I said, you did, huh? He said, yeah. He said, why don't you play it and see if anybody likes it, if you want to use it or not. I said, okay. <laughs> so we promoted it. He said, okay, tomorrow we're going to play this song by Country Jim Kirk. He's an FSU fan. And at that time, the Gators were about to win their first national championship in 1996. Anyway, so we played the song, and it was it was good. It was a good song. I can't begin to sing it. Time again for Buddy Martin, da da da, whatever. And we had a bunch of calls on it. And the funniest one was a Gator fan who said, "We can't have that song on the air." I said, "Why?" 
He says, because, you know, Jim Kirk's a Seminole fan. Yeah. And if you play that song backwards, it says, Steve Spurrier is the devil. <laughs> Which is the old joke about the Beatles. I always say, play it backwards, and it says he was saying. So we laughed at that. But we played it for two years. And there were actually kids who, to this day, were 8, 9, 10 years old, could sing that song and knew it because of Jim Kirk singing and of course we played that. But anyway, that's the kind of guy he is and uh, just a terrific guy. I know he's been a little under the weather lately. I haven't seen him in any Qantas Club meetings, but that's a worthy person you're honoring there, Bobby. Well, it's it's one of these things where we talk about his, uh, his days at WMOP. I just, I just remember the contact that I made with him when I first met his sons and how what a stand-up guy he was. Mm-hmm. You know, when you coached at Forest High School, you had some really good uh, you had some really good supporters out there. And when you see when you saw his kids come out, they played hard. They gave you everything they got. And Country Jim was the first person to say, "Hey, a job well done." Mm. And if he if you needed to get on his kids, there was never a problem with that. And this is one of the things uh, we have in education now as an as an educational uh, person in my life, you you run across people that have impacts, and when I say impacts, not just one or two people. You know, I wanted to be a basketball coach all my life, and then I had a person walk into me and said, "Bobby James, you could have a greater impact on students if you would walk up to the front office and become uh, an assistant principal or principal." And I, I've used that to try and measure people on the impact that they have on their community and, and their uh, surrounding. When I look at uh, the pancake breakfast that we have been doing for many years, I wanted to, this year, make sure that this pancake breakfast had an opportunity to impact the lives of people that Country Jim really think a lot of, and that was, that was kids. And so as we get ready to, uh, to chow down and we will enjoy the pancakes. They're good pancakes, and all the Kiwanians will be there. It will be a, a crowd out there, and you get a chance to socialize. And for all the Seminole fans, you can come out and and, and support Country Jim. And go. for all the uh, for all the Gator fans that's sitting out there that recognize Country Jim is a rare jewel, you can come out there and send a kid to camp, and on behalf of that. So it's one of these things where you'll have an opportunity to just to have a good time to socialize and to sit down and eat some all you can eat pancakes and you can eat you can sit there and just reminisce about the good old days so i get excited about it yeah i can see it. bobby james is our uh, is our guest today he's vice chairman of the mary current school board former coach uh, educator principal what have you and he's uh, telling you about the upcoming Kiwanis pancake breakfast on the date the date at, it's the usual place a street elementary it's on saturday december the 8th uh, 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's five dollars a person. You can't beat that. You know, you can't beat five bucks. And there, you get a stack of pancakes that you, will fill you up. And uh, I know there's always. I went in there last year. There's a long line in there. You know, you got to get in there because there's a lot of people who like those pancakes. My grandson, he's a he's a pancake Jesse. I mean, he he <laughs> he wants he'll eat pancakes as long as you bring them to him. So he'll be there for sure. Let me ask you about yourself for a second before we get we'll get back to this in the same. But give me your little walk-through resume. Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at uh, Howard High School. Mm-hmm. Howard High School is is the old, is the Howard Middle School at this time. The Wild Bulls. The Wild Bulls. You know, being at Howard, I was captain of the football team. And a good of football. The they had a good team. football program too. And I had uh, some opportunities to really play with some really good players. You know, I like had, who? Who'd you play with? Well. Uh, Eugene Milton. Yep. You know Eugene yep. Lightning Milton. He was the, they classified him as the world's fastest high school athlete. You know, and being at uh, being at Howard, you had a chance to. I'll tell you, when I think about all the athletes, I tell you some of the best ones that I played with with my brothers. Really? Which one? <laughs> There's so many. When I think in terms of my brothers, I think in terms of Melvin. When yeah. He, he trained. Uh, right. We had him firm. on the program. Yeah. Right there. yeah. And then I had uh, Jesse James, and that's mm-hmm. and the, the old motto held up by the James gang. That's what people would say. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he played on uh, three NCAA championship teams at Tennessee State University. Mm-hmm. You know, he got to play with uh, Two Tall Jones. He, had to, he was there when uh, Jefferson Joe Street uh, Gillum was there. And he was, he was a little bit younger when Claude Humphrey and all those guys mm-hmm. was there. But, you know, I had a chance to play basketball out west. And Where'd you I, play? 
I played at Paul Quinn College right down from Baylor University. Mm -hmm. But actually, I got my start out here at uh, uh, Central Florida. Oh, did you? You were a, you were a time. patriot. They call them something else, didn't they? Yeah, they were they they're rebels they're, or something back yeah, then. Yeah, back in the day. But you know, it was a tremendous experience that I've had. And you know, the thing that I really like about this community is the fact that I had a chance to go from being a a high school basketball coach to principal of an elementary school, a principal at an, of an uh, alternative school where you had no throwaway kids. And, and, and this is why I like what we, we're trying to do here. We just didn't throw away kids. There was an opportunity for a, a youngster to grow. It was an opportunity for a youngster to really find himself. And then I became principal of Don Allen High School. And this is where I believe in one teacher, one classroom, one school, one community. And as we began to mold this thing, and, and then I had the opportunity to really just live the, to create the impact of life of a greater number of people. You know, I served as chairman of the school board, vice chair, and I'm beginning to rotate through again as, as a vice chair again. And I had the opportunity to be uh, chairman of the Central Florida Coalition of School Boards. Big organization. Yeah. 850,000 students. 850,000 students, 10 of the um, premier schools district out of the, outside of the Dade County school system. I just returned from a a school board meeting down in Tampa, and we're looking at some of the, the challenges that we will be dealing with in terms of our education. And this is why it's it's so important for for, for me uh, as chairman of the Kiwanis Club, our pancake breakfast, um, to really get people involved with kids to really go back, get back to nature. To get back to see how it really is, and how n nature can can help you become so self-sufficient, and this is why I'm I'm I'm, I'm a, a very strong uh, uh, proponent proponent of the uh, of the Kiwanis Club and our camp in the in the in the forest, because it, it's give the kids an opportunity to get away from home. That's the first thing. They give them the uh, the, uh, the back outdoor nature mm -hmm. and they get a chance to sit around a campfire yeah. then do things that that we don't normally do anymore let's let's pause it right there we come back and we'll talk a little more about about camp Kiwanis here and in new york they call it the fresh air uh program which is they're bringing kids out of the city put them out in, in uh, different parts of the county where they can see green grass and green trees but let's talk about camp Kiwanis, and we'll also remind folks about where they can get their tickets coming up next right here on the voice of Ocala with bobby james after this timeout on 1370 AM, 96.7 FM, WOCA, the source. Hi, Buddy Martin along with Tom Schmitz with the Voice of Ocala. I was thinking the other day, Tom, how fortunate we are to be able to be in this community and be able to have a program every day from 3 to 6. It takes a lot to put on a show every day. It's a, it's a lot of efforts. you got to do a lot of production. you got to put a lot of show prep together. But not only that, you got to have sponsors to put a show like this on. Well, it's a number of things it takes. Of course, it takes listeners. Also, it takes a great management team at the station. And as you say, we can't thank our sponsors enough. They make it possible for the Voice of Ocala to be heard. And I think about our original sponsors we've had on this program, Country Club, Vocala, Prestige Auto Sales, Angela State Farm. You can't forget the ones we've added, though, buddy. Gateway Bank, High on Broadway, BJ Trophy and Awards. Yeah, of course, and then there's KMS Fitness, Dr. Terry Compton. We could go on and on. We've been really blessed. The most important thing, we want you to have a very blessed holiday. From myself, Buddy Martin, and the Voice of Ocala team, happy holidays. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. I want to tell you about a conversation I had recently with General Manager Pat Murray on the great family atmosphere at Country Club of Ocala. It's a family first club. Um, again, we you know we 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 have any number of different types of memberships, but obviously the the, the one that attracts the greatest level of interest is our family. And the reason for that is we have a little bit of something for everybody. I mean, we have we obviously have a world class golf course. Um, we have uh, seven tennis courts here for all levels of uh, tennis players. We have a junior Olympic size swimming pool. We have the uh, we have a fitness center that's that's second to none, and we have uh, state of the art equipment in our fitness center. Country Club of Ocala, where the facilities are all a family would ever need. For more information, call today at 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala. 
proud sponsor of Monday's Gator Report and Gator Talk Thursday right here on The Source. On Mondays, AM Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Julie McQueen and Beth Zingalewski. They're coming on to talk to us about diabetes and how people living with diabetes can control their blood sugar and keep up with diabetes management. Open for debate where both issues of one topic will be discussed. And then Catherine Hickam will be with us. She is a licensed psychotherapist and she's written a book called Heaven in Her Arms, Why God Chose Mary to Raise His Son and What It Means for Us. Matt Kaplan is a science journalist who contributes to National Geographic and BBC Wildlife. He'll be speaking about his book, Medusa's Gaze and Vampire's Bite, The Science of Monsters. And then auto repair with personal care with your host, Matt Gibbs, owner of Sunrise Automotive. Have all of your political questions answered by U.S. Representative Richard Nugent. And then John West will be on with us. He's a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute speaking about the new essay collection of C.S. Lewis, The Magician's Twin. All of that plus fun with Joe on Mondays, AM Ocala Live, right here on The Source, WOCA 96.7 FM. 1370 AM. Hey, Larry, nice haircut. Oh, thanks, Robin. Looks like you had something different done, too. Yes, I did. Thanks for noticing. I went to Lupe at Merle Norman on the Boulevard for a fresh cut, some summer highlights, and a facial. No kidding. That's who I go to. I didn't know she did all that. She does coloring, waxing, styling, updos, microderms, and she does it all for prices that won't break the bank. Sounds like you can take the whole family there. As a matter of fact, I do. Hi, this is Lupe. Let me be your personal stylist. To set up your appointment, call me today, 426-1229. Do you have any information about any crime or any wanted person in Marion County? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, you can pass along this information anonymously by calling Crime Stoppers at 368-STOP. This is an unrecorded, totally anonymous phone line with no caller ID. Or you can go to OcalaCrimeStoppers.com. You may receive a reward of up to $1,000. Step up and do the right thing for your community. Remember, we don't want your name, just the information at Crime Stoppers. Hi, right, welcome back to show. Bobby James is our special guest. Bobby, former coach, um, principal, currently the vice chairman of the American County School Board. Very active in the community, especially in things like Boys and Girls Club. And now Kiwanis Pancake Day. If you hadn't heard about it, it's, it's kind of an institution. 55 years has been on, and that's why I get so many people. All the proceeds go to bring to get kids uh, to Camp Kiwanis, which is a unique facility out in the forest where they go to get to go and spend. Is it two weeks or a week, Bobby? A week. It, it's a week. <clears throat> a week long out in the fresh air country. And like Bobby says, it's it's grounded. I mean, you get kids back to nature and kids who've been in situations sometimes that aren't the best in the world, get away from those and get out there in nature. It's a, something very peaceful about that. The the Pancake Day is at 8th Street Elementary School Cafeteria, Saturday, December the 8th, from 7 a.m. to 1. I suggest you get there a little early. You can also order take get the takeouts. How do you get a takeout? Do you call or you just come by and get it? You just walk in and just tell us how many you uh, you yeah. want, uh, and we will take care of it. Just okay. Give us a call. <laughs> I saw people um, getting pancakes out the back door last time I was out there. <laughs> How'd they get that now? Then? Well, that's part of the takeout yeah, process. Yeah, I know. And, isn't that wonderful to just have that that, that back door feeling? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the thing about, buddy. The thing that you you really like about it, you get to see people that you have not had that's an true. opportunity to that's talk true. Uh, talk to in a while. Mm-hmm. And it's it's more than just sitting around eating pancakes. Now, it's an opportunity to just walk around and meet some of your friends, and meet people that have the same interests that you have, and that is serving the kids of this community. You know, one important question that people uh, should be aware of, that at all of our elementary schools, there are applications for kids to go to Camp Kiwanis. And they will start putting them in there probably in uh, early May so that they'll have an opportunity for them to get a scholarship out there to go out into the forest and, and, and really just find themselves or get an opportunity to to uh, be away from home for a little while. Uh, this is uh, the things that's really unique about it is that every kid in Marion County will have an opportunity to go to this particular camp. And I, I, I just look at it when I was principal out at Fessenden, and we had kids that had a chance to go out uh, into the forest for, uh, for a week and to camp out. Big impact? Big impact. It's not one of these things where Freddy Krueger is out there or anything. <laughs> these kids got a chance to run around and get out on, on, on the lake 
and we have an an excellent uh, uh, a manager of that. We have an excellent uh, teacher. It's safe. Process. It's clean. All that oh, stuff. Oh yeah, uh, Scott Mitchell do an excellent job. Yes, he does. There. He, he does. do an excellent job of educating young people about the envir- about their environment and what they are about. We got about one minute. I want to make sure we jam it all in. You can send a kid too. For how much is there, is a scholarship? Uh, a scholarship is a hundred and fifty dollars for the week. One hundred fifty dollars. Send a kid to, to Cap Quantis for the week and Country Gym's name. Once again, I want you to know uh, where it's taking place. Kiwanis Pancake Day. If you want to see half of Old Ocala, they'll be there at this. <laughs> they'll, they'll be there. In, they'll be in Eighth Tree Elementary School cafeteria. It's December the 8th, Saturday, 7 to a.m. to 1, Nine there take out five hours. He's all it costs you for that. And is there any kind of number anybody can call if they have questions about it? Well, they can call Bobby James, and you'll get me personally. Oh, and my number is mm-hmm. uh, 427-3781, and I will be glad, happy to talk with anyone in reference to this program. And if you need some tickets, if you know a Kawana in, in Ocala. They got them. They got them because we are really pushing this. <laughs> yeah, up they're loaded up with them. Believe me, they're, they want to get rid of them for sure. But anyway, well, I got my last few seconds. Got about 15 I, seconds. Go. I, I just want to uh, thank you for uh, being a part of the organization and helping us get this word out. And it's one of these things where it's a community hef- effort. And if everybody just reach down and just help a child enjoy what we, as the older generation would say, get back to nature, get back to the real world. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby James, appreciate that. And have a have a great Christmas, too. And all the best on the pancake breakfast. I'll see you out there. Okay, thank all you. All right, Bobby all James. Right. Well, coming up in the next half hour, Willett Boyer from the Marion County Museum of uh, History and uh, Archaeology will join us here on the program. Stay tuned to The Voice of Ocala, 1370 AM, 96.7 FM, WOCA, The Source. You know, Tom, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas out there. And I think of Christmas, I think about the fact that we're so blessed to be able to be on the show every day here on The Voice of Ocala from 3 to 6 every afternoon. It's Christmas already, buddy. This is our second Christmas. 14 months we've been on the air. I believe it's 16, Tom, but who's counting? Without our sponsors and our listeners, none of this would be possible. We'll tell you this much. We hope you have a great holiday. We certainly enjoy bringing you our program each day. We thank you for your support. Happy holidays, everybody. Hi, this is Carl, KC5CMX from the Silver Springs Radio Club in Ocala. We're having our annual Amateur Radio Ham Fest Saturday, December 8th at Green Clover Hall, 319 Southeast 26th Terrace, starting at 7.30 in the morning. Tower Electronics will be there, and so will the tailgaters. Admission is $5, and the public is welcome. For a map or more information, please check us out at the k4gso.us website. Again, that's www.k4gso.us. Hope to see you there. Here in Florida, when you're looking to go to the beach, you've got hundreds of options. Theme parks, no shortage of options there either. But when it comes to home insurance, most companies have only one option. Allstate is different. Here in Florida, Allstate agents offer home insurance options from several companies. So they can help you get the coverage that's right for you. And they'll help you save on quality car insurance too. For starters, safe drivers save 45% with Allstate. So before you settle for just one option, talk to someone with many home and car insurance options. Your local Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? For more information, call the McDonald Agency at 352-622-2333 or visit us online at themcdonaldagency.com. Allstate has no financial responsibility to you for any home insurance policy you purchase and would not be responsible for any claims. Allstate does not make any representations or accept liability related to operations of home insurance companies, including but not limited to their financial conditions. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Savings vary. Hi, this is Alan Taylor. Do you want to know what flowers to get your wife on your anniversary? Or which feminine product might be the next big thing? Then don't listen to my show, for God's sake. But if you're interested in the latest and greatest in the automotive world, then tune in every Saturday morning for Motor Trend Radio, right here on WOCA, 1370 AM and 96.7 FM, The Source. You're listening to WOCA, 1370 AM, 96.7 FM, The Source. Hi, this is Brad from Ocala Aviation. How would you like to have someone give you $4,000? Call me. Brad, can't end the commercial that way. Why not? Because you have to tell them why you're giving away $4,000. No, I don't. It's $4,000. Yeah, I know, but for what? Oh, I see. You mean, like, uh, tell them it's for a flight scholarship that gives young people a chance to fulfill their dreams of becoming a pilot? 
Yeah, something like that. Nah, just give them the phone number. It's $4,000. All right. What's the phone number? 352-861-7484. Okay, that works. Rediscover the fun and adventure of Silver Springs, Florida's most natural wonder. You'll be amazed at the moments you'll share. With glass bottom boats, jungle river cruises, and wild animal shows, there's no place like it on Earth. And right now, Florida residents save half off daily adult admission to Silver Springs. Or for the best value of the year, get the all new Platinum Pass, just $59.99. Your Platinum Pass comes with a full calendar of great concerts like Easton Corbin and Joan Jett. And you'll get a full year of special events, plus VIP entry, free parking with every visit, even a free wild water season pass. All yours with the Platinum Pass. Buy online now for just $59.99. So make your own special memories at Nature's Theme Park, Silver Springs, east of Ocala on State Road 40, or on the web at silversprings.com. Hi, I'm Lisa Midget with Kinetic Motion Fitness, Ocala's premier small group and personal training fitness studio. Did you know you can achieve all your fitness goals, whether that's losing weight, getting fit, or training for a personal best, all with no membership fees? Have you ever been embarrassed or intimidated at a big gym because you're not a Greek god or a size zero supermodel? Have you ever felt like your gym would rather you not even show up? At KMF, we have a team approach that focuses on small classes and personal training, and you'll feel like family, not just another number. No more boring treadmills or endless reps. Our classes are fun, energetic, and get you the results you want. And I should know, with the help of our great trainers, I lost over 100 pounds in eight jean sizes, and I did it using no heavy equipment and no magic pills, just fun and effective workouts. And yes, I did say fun. Come join us at KMF. Visit our website at kmfocala.com or like us on Facebook. Again, that was kmfocala.com. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. I'm Daria Albinger. We're going to have to wait to hear if the Supreme Court is going to say we do to same-sex marriage or at least to hearing cases that pertain to it. At issue, California's Proposition 8 and other laws which question whether the Constitution allows people to marry regardless of sexual orientation. Two college campuses on lockdown today. At least three people are dead in an incident at Casper State College in Wyoming. A football player at Morgan State University in Maryland was shot and wounded in a separate incident. He wants a red Camaro. She wants to travel, but Mark and Cindy Hill say otherwise life will be the same, except for the fact that now they're really, really rich. The Missouri couple had one of the two winning tickets in this week's Powerball drawing. They'll split the $587 million jackpot with the other winning ticket holder. That ticket sold in Arizona. Bo the first dog is back in a new Christmas video on the White House website. He's giving kids a dog's eye view of the Executive Mansion's holiday decorations. This is ABC News. Have you heard? Proactive is better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway. Do you have troubled skin, acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive, your acne can heal and you can prevent new breakouts from happening. Be one of the first to try it by giving us a call at 1-800-685-2914. Because we're going to let a million people try Proactive risk-free and also receive our legendary refining mask and green tea moisturizer free if you call right now. You heard it. Be one of the first to try better than ever proactive solution. You'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial, plus a free refining mask and green tea moisturizer. Call 1-800-685-2914. This is our best radio offer. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of proactive plus two free extras. Go to getproactive.com or call 1-800-685-2914. That's 1-800-685-2914. I'm just sick of all the amateur stuff, you know? I mean, like, if I'm paying top dollar, I want a little production value, you know? Like some editing, transition, something, some music. Don't worry. We didn't leave you. He's gone. He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Our bosses say we got to stay. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. It's time for the second hour of The Voice of Ocala. hoo You ever come across anything like time travel? Come on. Stick around. It's free. If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win.
Hey, welcome to Hour 2. Uh, ready to go with you here for another 60 minutes before we get the Buddy Sports page today. A lot of football to talk about when we get there. And meanwhile, it's time to talk about old things. I don't mean me, although I certainly would fit in that category of fossils. But uh, our friend Willard Boyer's back. He's got goodies like he always is. When he, he digs in the dirt. When you were a little boy, Willard, did you dig in the dirt? Did your mother say, Willard, get out of that dirt? Yes, many times. More times than I can possibly yeah, count. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Uh, Willard Boyer, he's the director of Barron County Museum of History and Archaeology. He's always bringing interesting things here. All kinds of digs, everything from downtown to out where Hernando de Soto may have come through here to we're looking for all um, all those trails. And what you've been working on has been interesting, by the way. Well, uh, this go-round, we're back uh, in the northern part of Marion County. We just finished working at uh, uh, one of our sites uh, uh, not too far off of Moss Bluff. And we're uh, back in the middle of uh, uh, continuing uh, uh, controversy, quite frankly, from an academic standpoint in any case. Um, and it involves uh, the one of the site types that you mentioned, uh, uh, in this case, sites that are associated with Hernando de Soto. Mm-hmm. We've got a uh, landowner in the northern part of Marion County that has uh, very generously allowed us a, a chance to work there for the longer term. Is that where I went? Uh, yes, mm-hmm. same place that you went, but the interesting thing is where you were with us um, is actually one of about a dozen sites that are located on that property, big sites. There's a whole mm-hmm. bunch of even smaller ones. Mm-hmm. And three of those sites are sites that were occupied on into the colonial historic period. Um, all three of them were almost certainly mission sites because of what's been found there. And we're working at the northernmost one, and this one is especially interesting because we're coming across increasing evidence at this site that it's not just a uh, mission site. Uh, if it's the one that I'm thinking of, it's one of the older missions, uh, probably the, one of the very first ones that was founded west of the St. John's River, uh, actually founded the year before Jamestown in 1606. And... Uh, it also appears to be, as we're hunting for and on the track of, another DeSoto site, potentially. And actually, just today, uh, I and my crew were working there, and the artifacts that I brought here, some of them were found earlier this oh, week, yeah. but the ones that are the most significant were found earlier today, in a conjunction with some that we found over the last couple of months, because mm-hmm. all of these are artifacts that seem to be potentially associated with Hernando DeSoto. I don't know if, if, if you can see, Laura can get that camera so we can see it over here. Uh, and and, and on, on some of these things, you can sort of bend it down, Laura, if you want to. Just put it, move it over closer, and you'll see it there on the screen. Anyway, we'll look at some of these things in a minute about what you've got here. But I, I want to go back to the day I went out with you to this site and, and watch you dig and watch you work. My wife and I went out there and watched your crew. And I, what, one thing that struck me was you don't waste a shovel full of dirt. Nope. When you got it right in there, and by the way, he was banning the shovel himself. <laughs> Dr. Boyer on the shovel, and he dug up. I thought, well, he'll have to dig a hole here about four or five feet. No. First shovel down there, he's turning it up, and there's little things. I said, what in the earth, what in the world can you find in there? Explain. Well, um, when you have got an area that hasn't been disturbed uh, by later stuff, Layers after layers after layers, the deeper you go, the older you get. But in this particular area, uh, from the very beginning, the minute that you put a shovel in the dirt, sometimes even before you put a shovel in the dirt, because some of the things I'm going to show you are surface finds, uh, there are artifacts. And this one area particularly, uh, Marion County has had people here, of course, for 13,000 years. But in terms of the historic period, uh, from the time that you see Europeans coming here and before, this area that you came out to is especially important because there's some very ancient stuff, Paleo-Indian, archaic period stuff, but from the time of the coming of DeSoto onward, there have been Europeans in that area. When you were out there that day, uh, we were finding some stuff uh, that was Native American that was associated with the later historic period. And some of the things, if you remember, that we were turning up there were actually uh, part of a 19th century from the 1800s boat landing. One of the first steamboat landings in this area right. belonged to a guy named Judge Means. And where you were that day, we think, was Judge Means' boat landing. We were digging probably through part of the area they'd flattened out to bring uh, uh, cargo and other things off the boats and to take things down to get loaded up. And prior to that, probably Native Americans were out there. Well, they like. Oh them. yes, uh, almost certainly. Yeah. Uh, what makes Marion County so rich in in artifacts? The fact that it's an area number one that people have been living at, as I said, for a very long period of time. Undisturbed, and th- lots of places undisturbed. Precisely. The uh, that's the second point, and it's something that's a matter of privilege to me, not just as an archaeologist, but also as a seventh generation native here, and that's that. 
This is an area that, for whatever reason, like a lot of parts of northern and central Florida, hadn't gotten a great deal of attention historically or archaeologically, despite its importance. Most archaeologists that I've known t in Florida prefer to work on the coasts, or they prefer to work at areas that are better documented, like uh, St. Augustine, which is both on the coast and the colonial capital, or the area around Tallahassee, which is not only Florida's American capital, but also was the sub-capital, had a Spanish mission in the town there in the 1600s. And it's easier tempting to do that, but the reality is that most of the people in Florida that made things go through all time periods lived in areas like the ones here. We've got some of the best farmland, we've got beautiful area to live, we've got wonderful rivers to travel, and people have been using these for a long time. And in the colonial period, the Spanish were thinking more of the missions on the coast or the missions on the royal road to the north of here. And the, yet the missions here were the ones that grew a lot of the food and provided a lot of the labor. In the 1800s, you get a lot of documentation on cities like Jacksonville or Key West or what have you, where you've got people going in and out and a lot of records. But again, the reality is that our town here, uh, for a while uh, in the 1800s, was the boom town. It was one of the fastest growing cities in Florida and had people coming here from all over the world. When we did our dig in the downtown, we were finding ceramics and things that were imported from all over the United States, from Europe. So that is a treasure and a privilege because this area has not been tested or done a great deal with archaeologically, and that means we've got a lot of big, phenomenal, undisturbed sites that are going to tell us a lot about what's going on here. And in addition to the fact that so many of the explorers landed south of us, Tampa Bay, or even down in uh, Charlotte Harbor, or wherever people came in, DeSoto, uh, what have you, <clears throat> and and they came up through here because th we were the we were the trail. This That's is where right. everybody came, and so Native Americans, explorers, all came through here. So there's got to be a lot of stuff out there, as you point out, the missions, the explorers, Native Americans. Uh, I know you're finding all kinds of treasures. And I want to get to those in just a minute. Let you show some of those things and talk about it. Let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll join Dr. Willard Boyer of the Marion County Museum of History and Archaeology right here in the Voice of Ocala after this time out on 1370 AM, 96.7 FM, WOCA, The Source. Every day we hear another story about innovation or about cutting-edge technology taking place right here in Ocala. The power plant, IHMC, Ocala 489. Did you know that important medical research is also being conducted here that may impact hundreds of thousands of people in the country someday? Maybe you've heard the name Renstar, but like so many others, perhaps you didn't realize that Renstar Medical Research is one of the top facilities of its kind anywhere in the U.S. There are important research studies being conducted by a highly qualified team of medical experts at Renstar, impacting the decisions of major pharmaceutical companies and bringing new drugs to market. And you can be a part of these studies, as so many local people have done and are currently doing. Renstar has conducted more than 500 studies since its inception and would like to extend the opportunity to you to be a part of these cutting-edge programs. Call 877-629-5800 or 352-629-5800 if you'd like to know more. Renstar Medical Research, locally owned and operated in beautiful downtown Ocala. Renstar, seeking tomorrow's answers to the health questions of today. Hi, this is Buddy Martin. If you have an award or a trophy in your house, there's more than a good chance it came from BJ Trophies Gifts and Awards. At BJ Trophies, Floyd Hershberger and his staff have a lot more than just trophies. Among the items they specialize in are donor recognition walls and trees, personalized or engraved gifts, cast bronze dedication plaques, wide format digital printing with posters, banners, and signs, and promotional products. Floyd is the official trophy and awards maker for the Voice of Ocala radio show and is North Central Florida's leader in custom recognition programs, corporate awards, industrial engraving, unique gifts, and advertising specialties. When Angie Lewis went shopping for something to award to the winners of her State Farm Good Neighbor Award, she shopped first at BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Check them out at 1735 Northeast Jacksonville Road on North Magnolia's Miracle Mile or call them today at 352-732-2249. BJ Trophies Awards and Gifts. Trophies is just our middle name. If you need a sign or a banner for your yard or your business or your campaign, I'd recommend you go to Signs Unlimited at 318 South Magnolia in Ocala. Screen printing, embroidery, digital graphics, do what I did when we needed signs for the Save the Marion Theater Group. Go see Vic Buttermore at Signs Unlimited if you want quality work with a fast turnaround from somebody who is deeply committed to his community and always ready to assist you. There's a reason Vic's slogan is, it's our business to make your business better. Sign up for Signs Unlimited. Call 732-7341 today. 
On Mondays, AM Ocala Live, Robin and I will be speaking to Julie McQueen and Beth Zingalewski. They're coming out to talk to us about diabetes and how people living with diabetes can control their blood sugar and keep up with diabetes management. Open for debate where both issues of one topic will be discussed. And then Catherine Hickam will be with us. She is a licensed psychotherapist and she's written a book called Heaven in Her Arms, Why God Chose Mary to Raise His Son and What It Means for Us. Matt Kaplan is a science journalist who contributes to National Geographic and BBC Wildlife. He'll be speaking about his book, Medusa's Gaze and Vampire's Bite, The Science of Monsters. And then auto repair with personal care with your host, Matt Gibbs, owner of Sunrise Automotive. Have all of your political questions answered by U.S. Representative Richard Nugent. And then John West will be on with us. He's a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute speaking about the new essay collection of C.S. Lewis, The Magician's Twin. All of that plus fun with Joe on Mondays, AM Ocala Live, right here on The Source, WOCA 96.7 FM. 1370 AM. Hi, this is Carl, KC5CMX, from the Silver Springs Radio Club in Ocala. We're having our annual Amateur Radio Ham Fest Saturday, December 8th at Green Clover Hall, 319 Southeast 26th Terrace, starting at 7.30 in the morning. Tower Electronics will be there, and so will the tailgaters. Admission is $5, and the public is welcome. For a map or more information, please check us out at the k4gso.us website. Again, that's www.k4gso.us. Hope to see you there. Look who just walked in the room, Joe Wiesner from What's Up Ocala. Hey, Joe, I'm looking for something to do this weekend. You got any ideas? Absolutely. Check out our event calendar online at www.whatsupocala.com, and there is plenty of events there for you. Daily news updates to event reviews and magazine articles. Really? We've organized it all in one place online for you to cut through all of the hassle of finding something to do this weekend. We have a daily event calendar, a bi-monthly magazine, and we also do daily news articles. All right, Joe, that's perfect. Thanks so much. Yeah. Whatsupocala.com. This news break brought to you by Country Club of Ocala. According to Ocala.com, President Obama today accused Republicans of putting Americans at risk of a Scrooge Christmas if they failed to extend middle-class tax cuts, telling workers in Pennsylvania that a tax increase would be a lump of coal. Obama made his remarks about the negotiations to avert the impending fiscal cliff. This news break was brought to you by the Country Club of Ocala. If you would like to schedule a, a special event at one of Ocala's premier facilities, call 237-6644 today. Hi, welcome back to the program. Willa Boyer, the, uh, I don't know, I, I, I just call you everything. You're the director, you're the, you, 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 you do every, curator. every job. You, I know you're curator, curator director, uh, uh, Grand promoter. Grand uh, You can do it all. <laughs> and do a wonderful job, I might add. Thank to, you. To, to all the things you're doing there. Let's get through these artifacts. You went to a lot of trouble to bring them, uh, Willa Boyer, from the Marion County Museum of History and Archaeology. Um, and let's let's go through each one. I'm fascinated by that little chart there, but you do it in all, whatever order you want to do. Okay, no problem. Um, the site that we're working at, as I mentioned before the break, is uh, one of several that's owned uh, by the same landowner and is in the northern part of Marion County, uh, near where you have uh, had the opportunity to come out with us before. And this area is fascinating because there have been people there for a very, very long period of time, and that's true of all of Marion County, but it's especially true in this vicinity uh, uh, near Orange Lake and McIntosh uh, uh, because you're ending up with a situation there where you've had uh, ways for people to live. and. You have both large groups of Native Americans there before contact. You have towns that were, uh, in some cases, referred to or associated with Hernando de Soto um, in the early contact period, and then later on towns that were among the first ones that had Spanish missions west of the St. Johns River in the early 1600s. And afterwards, you have some of the first American settlers uh, in this area that are living up there in the northern part of Marion County, uh, southern part of what is now Alachua County. And all of the artifacts we've got here date to all of those different time periods. And what I'll do um, here is kind of bring through some of the ones from some of the different eras and then point out some of the ones that uh, folks may be particularly interested in. Uh, we'll start off with some of the older artifacts from this particular site. This site uh, seems to have started being occupied probably not too long before European contact because most of the artifacts in this one area are up closer to the ground surface, which means they're more recent. Mm -hmm. 
And the largest number of artifact types we have are Native American ceramics, like the ones that I've got right here. And if you're listening at home and have your home radio on, uh, just go to WSA.com. You can see these on the uh, site. Click on the arrow. You'll be able to see some of these. Okay. Um, um, let's bring up a couple of them right here. Um, the interesting thing about this site, we've been working in the eastern part of Marion County, the southeastern part of Marion County for the last few months. And over there, you've got part of the cultural region that's named for the river and its tributaries, the St. John's Cultural Region. Um, there you have pottery that's very, very common like this right here. Um, this is a piece of St. John's check stamped. It feels almost like it's been carved out of chalk and while this one is worn, got a little pattern of squares on the surface. Over on the aqua and the St. John's, um, this is extremely common because that's the heartland of that cultural area that you see right here. But at this site, um, you see something very different. The most common type of ceramics are a kind of ceramics that are named for the county uh, and for the area, Alachua tradition ceramics. Alachua tradition ceramics are different than the ones that the other Timucua Indians were using in the east. These are tempered with sand, and a lot of times they tend to be fairly finely made. This piece, if you look at, even though it doesn't have any paint on it, has been burnished with a stone where it kind of throws the light back a little bit. If you run your finger over it, you'll see that it's extremely smooth. What's um, it used for? Uh, this is ordinary cooking pottery. Uh, some of it, though, is a little bit better decorated. And the interesting thing about it, um, this piece right here, if you take a look, you can see that somebody has decorated it uh, by uh, incising it just a little bit. You can see you've got a little series of lines running over the top of it there. And I believe it's this piece. Yep, this piece right here. Part of it's smooth, and then if you look on the side right there, it's got this funny-looking series of marks. These marks are uh, from a corn cob. This is a type of pottery that is called a Lachua cob marked. Mm. This is one of the first areas where we have proof the Indians were using corn on a larger scale because they tend to decorate their pots with uh, this sort of thing. You've got grit-tempered pottery right here. It's like sand-tempered. Uh, tempering, by the way, folks, is anything that you mix with the clay to make a pot stronger, and this is kind of thicker and heavier. Uh, more sand-tempered and grit-tempered pottery right here and then you've got a big chunk of chert and this is a core this is a kind of thing that you would flake tools off of to make them and this was one of our surface finds from earlier today uh, very very interesting um, this is well, you got three things that you just got this morning right uh, yes well actually a lot of these we got this morning or okay. this week these three though were found this morning at the Again, site mentioning chert as being one of the most hard and durable substances they made arrows out of them arrowheads they made uh, they, they they made I guess I would call them hatchets. What are they, all yep, kind of hatchets, tools. spearheads, it's choppers? Such, it's like it's almost like granite is so hard and it's hard to break in. Very much so, and that's what makes it good for tools because once you do have it worked into shape, it'll usually stay that way. Now this is a type of stone point. We've brought in a lot of older points on the program before, but this one is what you're going to see more commonly in the later period. The Indians, when the Spaniards first showed up and for a while before that, they were still using stone tools, but they weren't using the same sized ones or quite as many of them as their ancestors did. Um, and when they did use them, they were mostly using them for the bow and arrow, because the bow and arrow we think was invented by the Indians here about 1,200 years ago. About 800. Here? Yep. Right here? Really? That's right. Before that, they were using spears, like the, the points that we brought in before were mostly spear points or knife blades. It wasn't until about 1,200 years ago that they developed the bow and arrow. And you first see in the archaeological record, all the way on up into the historic period, little points that look like this. Some people call them bird points. The archaeologist's name for them is Pinellas Points here in Florida, because that's the county where they were first discovered. But they're these little tiny triangular points like this one. They don't have a tang. They're not very wide. They're designed to be made quickly, where you can put them on the tip of an arrow shaft and you can shoot them if you need to or you can trade them off with something else if you're going to go uh, uh, bow hunting um, or bow fishing with them which the Indians did based on what we can tell and from the historic records. But what makes this site especially significant is we've found hundreds uh, at this point we're into several thousand fragments of Native American ceramics. We found Pinellas points. We found other things that date to the later period. But this site is also extremely significant because we have found not just one, but two different time periods of Spanish artifacts. We found artifacts that date to the early 1600s. We found uh, uh, pieces of what is called middle style olive jar. Uh, we found a type of majolica, which is a tin enameled ware that dates to the early 1600s. We found Spanish trade beads, not just here, but at the site you were 
Ballarat, buddy, and another one to the south of that. So there was at least one mission and probably more likely three in this area. Um, but the interesting thing about this one of the three are artifacts like these that I'm about to hold up here. This variety of olive jar that I'm holding in my hand is a lot older than the mission period. Um, I'm going to hold it up on the side here about to the what, camera. About what period? This is at least 100 years older than the time of the missions. Um, so 1600? Or early 1500s. 1500s. Sorry. Yes. This type of olive jar is called early style olive jar. It was made, or it shows up in the New World from 1492. You see it in context as late as the 1570s, but it's most common on sites that date to the 1520s, 1530s. You see some of it in St. Augustine in the very early context. If you look at it from the outside, this has a thick whitish effluvium. This one spot right here was damaged, um, unfortunately, by the shovel when we were digging. On the interior, if you take a look, you've got a nice, thick, heavy green glaze. And middle and later style olive jars were after Spain got their empire going. They're the kind of thing you'd find at a mission because they're big, huge, heavy pots, and they'd be used. They loved them some olive jars, didn't they? They did. I mean, they had olive jars everywhere. Well, it also was there. It's a matter of pride for the Spanish that even if they're in the New World, they're going to eat stuff from the mother country where they can. They want wine coming from Spain. They want olive oil because olives won't grow most places over here, and they want other foods and stuff that are coming from there. And in the 16th hundreds they're shipping that out these are big heavy shipping containers mm -hmm. but in the 1500s when you have explorers like Narvaez and in this area de Soto coming through you're going to have olive jars that look like this one if this was uh, from it, the intact vessel it would look kind of like this rounded globule it would have a couple of handles and it would have a flared neck it actually would look kind of like a canteen that you could cork and this is the kind of thing that a soldier would have hanging at his belt that he would have to take a drink or what have you this would not have been made any later than 1550 and we have found nearly 10 pieces of this very distinctive early style olive jar at this site you're not going to find that many pieces unless you have a large group of Spaniards staying there for a while so we're starting to think that this may be another DeSoto site so far we've got 10 pieces and something we just found this morning that boosted that interpretation is this piece of pottery right here I'm going to hold this up to the camera for the uh, uh, listeners that may be watching online. But if you take a look, this has a very thick, heavy, slightly off-white glaze. And if I turn it on the side right here, you'll notice that it's kind of buff. Um, it has a slightly tan color to the paste. And I'm going to hold it up here on the bottom. And if you look, it has a dimple on this edge. This is where the base of the vessel would have been. Mm -hmm. This is a type of Spanish majolica. As we've mentioned before, majolica is a type of plate like a, a, a china that was made with a glaze that was made from tin. They melted tin, they melted the stuff to make the colors, and then they coated the plate before they fired it. This type of majolica was only made through 1550 also. It is a very distinctively, very tightly dated type of ceramic. And the fact you've got this older Columbia plain and you've got many pieces of early style olive jars suggests very strongly that we may have a DeSoto site. Connection. Speaking of handles, we've got about a minute and a half to go here. Let's get those uh, that handle over there and hold it up. And that railroad spike, and tell us what period that's from. This is from a little bit later. At the same property, in the 1800s, you had the railroad pass through there. You had some of the older we American We know DeSoto didn't and, come on a railroad. That's it is sure. Very much so, exactly. But this is a, uh, actually uh, not just a railroad spike. Um, it looks like it it might have been used to fasten uh, possibly a car together or something like that. Uh, this uh, brass handle right here, we're not 100% sure what that came from because it doesn't have screw threads. It looks like this was actually embedded in there. So this is from the 1800s. Uh, the date range on this particular type of spike and this thing right here is going to be sometime between 1840 and about 1860 How or 1870. Because when you get into the historic period, you have very distinctive records of when things were made, and you've got many more pictures that show what things look like, photographs it's and other things. a footprint thi there that you can tell, right? Exactly. That's yeah. just exactly right. <clears throat> so this is from the 1800s. Let's get a word in about the museum. Thanks for us. are fascinating, those are artifacts. Thanks for bringing them all in. <clears throat> Let's talk about the museum for a second. I know you've got some things going on out there right now. What's happening in the museum? And, of course, we should tell people open seven days a week out of the McPherson Center. 
just east of town. Um, and uh, you've got a couple of uh, exhibitions out there right now going on. What's in the future plans? We have some really wonderful things planned. We're going to be continuing to work with the students from Westport High School. Uh, we have uh, nearly 300 of them that are scheduled to come wow. through at different times wow, through the year. Awful lot of students. We have, uh, uh, if things work out right, we're planning to um, expand a number of our exhibits in the pre-contact and colonial room, also in the American Historic Room. We just received a number of wonderful donations for our World War II Great Depression exhibit, and we're working on upgrading that. Uh, we have uh, planned uh, in the uh, early spring or the uh, winter next year, uh, January 20th, Michael Mason, who's coming to talk to us about uh, the steamboat era here and some of the things that were done along the Aquawaha. So we have some really wonderful things going on. Lectures? Lectures coming? Yep, lecture series. <laughs> uh, like I said, the first one's going to be January 20th by Michael Mason. Mm -hmm. uh, those are always on Sundays, uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, followed normally by an open house. Mm -hmm. So we've got some really wonderful things that are happening, and we're very excited and very proud about the fact that we're going to be working with a much larger group of high school students this year. The students that have been through the program so far have had a wonderful time, and they've actually come out and worked at this site. So the, you know, their help has been yeah. instrumental in finding this kind of thing. Yeah. I know you've got some fundraisers to talk about next time you come on, but I just want to tell people the basic information. Email Land of the Rivers at hotmail.com. <clears throat> and telephone number out at the museum. 352-236-5245. If you'd like to help us out, we'd love to hear from you. Dr. Willett-Boy, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming in and for all the work you're doing out there. Thank you so much, buddy. All right, we'll take a break, come back, and we've got lots to coming your way right here. Stay tuned for all kinds of stuff. It's Football Friday. We'll talk about some of the events going on. We'll talk about uh, how a guy found out he was fired at college by, of all things, inadvertently getting an email what he's supposed to get. He got fired as a football coach. Tell you about that next right here at the Voice Bill Gala, 1370 AM, 98.6 FM, 97.6. I'll get it in a minute. I'll get it right. It's not 96.3. It's 96.7, right, JJ? I've only been doing this 16, well, 14, 15 months. So. Anyway, we're back after this timeout. Hi, Buddy Martin, along with Tom Schmitz from The Voice of Ocala. I was thinking the other day, Tom, how fortunate we are to be able to be in this community and be able to have a program every day from 3 to 6. It takes a lot to put on a show every day. It's a, it's a lot of effort. you got to do a lot of production. you got to put a lot of show prep together. But not only that, you got to have sponsors to put a show like this on. Well, there's a number of things it takes. Of course, it takes listeners. Also, it takes a great management team at the station. And as you say, we can't thank our sponsors enough. They make it possible for The Voice of Ocala to be heard. And I think about our original sponsors we've had on this program, Country Club, Vocala, Prestige Auto Sales, Angie Lewis State Farm. You can't forget the ones we've added, though, buddy. Gateway Bank, High on Broadway, BJ Trophy and Awards. Yeah, of course, and then there's KMS Fitness, Dr. Terry Compton. We could go on and on. We've been really blessed. The most important thing, we want you to have a very blessed holiday. From myself, Buddy Martin, and the Voice of Ocala team, happy holidays. Recently, I had a great conversation with General Manager Pat Murray on the special events at Country Club of Ocala. We have a lot of uh, events, special events here that are that are geared towards the family. Uh, Easter comes to mind. We have uh, an Easter bunny who hops around on the driving range. At, we usually hide somewhere in a boat of 3,000 eggs and, 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 and turn them loose and let them go harvest the eggs. We have a great family celebration here on the 4th of July where it's, it's a traditional cookout, if you will. And as the, as the sun goes down, the driving range becomes alive with uh, probably one of the better fireworks displays in the, in the area. Uh, breakfast with Santa is a Big, is a big deal. Country Club of Ocala, where the Easter Bunny, Santa, and all the children, large and small, are a big deal on every special occasion. For more information, call 352-237-6644. That's 352-237-6644. Country Club of Ocala, proud sponsor of the Monday Gator Report, right here on The Source. Hi, this is Alan Taylor. Do you want to know what flowers to get your wife on your anniversary? Or which feminine product might be the next big thing? Then don't listen to my show, for God's sake. But if you're interested in the latest and greatest in the automotive world, then tune in every Saturday morning for Motor Trend Radio, right here on WOCA, 1370 AM and 96.7 FM, The Source. Digital Graphics Reborn. Phoenix Graphics. When you need vehicle graphics, banners, T-shirts, window graphics, you need to call Phoenix Graphics at 368-2404. When you need building signs, vehicle wraps, yard signs, realty signs, 
Lists, business cards. You need to call 368-2404. Phoenix Graphics. Digital Graphics Reborn. Robin, we need a trophy for the winner of the best rock band. Oh, who won? Stone Quarry. Ooh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Uh, maybe. I I'm thinking we should call BJ Trophies. Wait, let's get Dan to make a trophy. But... Oh, Dan. Robin, didn't we go through this already? Yes, Robin. Dan, we need you to chisel a rock. Is this for another trophy? Yes, it is. Um, remember, I'm not so good at chiseling trophies. Why don't you call BJ Trophy? That's what I tried to say. But you'd be perfect. Why? I thought we already decided the best trophies are from BJ Trophies. Because you're good at rocks. Yes, Dan, because you're good at rocks. But you want a trophy, not a rock. Uh, it's for a rock band. Oh, 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 jeez. Isn't that a clever idea? Clever, yes. Classy, no. I think you'd better stick to BJ Trophies for your rock band trophy. But you're so good at rocks. For the classiest trophy anywhere, call BJ Trophies 732-2249 or go to bjtrophy.com Unless you want a rock. Yeah, then hold on. Unless you need a classy rock. Then stick with BJ Trophies.